Namaste, my name is Shailaja and in today's video I'll be talking about the life force that runs our body, that is the vayus. What are the different kinds of vayus and how they affect our body? Then I'll explain about pranotana, that is the initial release of uh, kundalini in our body. Then the types of kundalini risings, the consequences and the unique experiences that are associated with such risings. One of my subscribers asked me this question. Once the Kundalini flows out of Sahasrara, does this mean that all chakras are now fully open? So today's video is uh, meant to answer this question and even give you a total understanding of how, as to how the whole Kundalini rising happens within our body. That which is the main support of all living beings is the prana. The prana is the subtle aspect of the air element and this supports the life activities in our body. In our la my last video, I described the different uh, koshas we have or the subtle body system where the innermost being the bliss sheath which is again surrounded by the intellectual sheath then comes the um, mental sheath then comes the pranic sheath and then comes the physical body so this is the second body the pranic sheath or the pranamaya kosha now this operates between the men mental sheath and the physical sheath and typically vayus is a subtle aspects of the air element they are working in this sheet and they're supporting life, the physical life. If you take up with a pranamaya kosha, the physical body cannot function. Person will uh, die. So the pranic kosha or the pranamaya kosha plays a major role in keeping this body alive, active, and it supports the main uh, functioning of the body. It uh, permeates throughout the body. We use this word called prana very often. Prana is a type of vayu. In general sense, we call uh, vayus as prana. But here, because I am specifically talking about the topic of vayus, I am using the word vayu because prana is one of the kinds of vayus that is there in our body. So please do not confuse the term prana with vayu. And uh, I'll be talking about five different kinds of vayus. That is the prana vayu, udana vayu, vyana vayu, samana vayu and apana vayu. These vayus, they are operating in our pranic sheath or the pranamaya kosha. We are not aware of these operations that are happening there. And they support the functioning, the proper functioning of the physical body. Now, things like thirst or hunger or restlessness or sexual desire, all these things, the, or, the origin is the pranamaya kosha. That suffering starts from there. And when the hunger is satiated, that is, uh, you had a good meal, and then you feel the satisfaction of that having a good meal. It the origin for that kind of satisfaction also comes from your pranamaya kosha. So pranamaya kosha causes suffering and it even gives a satisfaction also. The size of the pranamaya kosha is similar to the physical body. And when somebody is in deep meditation, uh, they can see this body like a light colored body or something like made out of vapor, a light colored vapor. That is how it appears in meditative states. The pranamaya kosha consists of the nadis. The nadis is, these are the energy pathways through which the uh, vayus flow. There are about 72,000 uh, nadis in our body. 
then the chakras the dalas that is the petals of the chakras the breathing patterns they all are part of the pranamaya kosha the lotuses now uh, the pranamaya kosha can be influenced by the physical body through the breathing pattern that is why breathing practices are very important for a yogi somebody is on the spiritual path they always have a certain breathing exercises to do because the way you breathe influences the pranamaya kosha and who is a yogi a yogi is a person in whom the pranic force he can experience the pranic force flowing through the nadi system the first kind of vayu i'll be talking about is the apana vayu you can see that in the picture here in the lower part of the picture this works from the navel to the uh, feet region the soles of the feet the main function of this is to give strength to the body and uh, it removes impurities from the body this has a downward movement it moves downwards so anything that moves downwards in the body for example the urination or releasing of impurities from the body defecation releasing of sexual fluids from the body childbirth all these things uh, are uh, done by the apana vayu next comes the samana vayu samana vayu is all about creating juices so this is there from the heart region to the navel region so this helps in the secretion of digested juices and then it even uh, helps in the distribution of the digested food and uh, it helps in the uh, the nourishment of the heart brain nervous system and then it helps in the proper functioning of the kidney spleen pancreas gall bladder because these are the uh, organs that secrete digestive juices in our body apart from that it even helps in the urinary process so this typically operates from the heart to the navel region and it is generally concerned with digestion and distribution of digested food to various parts of the body then comes the pranavayu pranavayu is very important it is the upward movement of the uh, vayus it is from the generally it operates in the region of the mouth to the heart so this helps in the inhalation and exhalation of air it allows you to utter sounds then uh, it moves food and water into the stomach when you swallow something the water and the food goes into the stomach because of this vayu it creates sweat it maintains the heat of the body it helps in blood circulation and this is the uh, vayu that causes hunger and thirst in a person the fourth type of vayu is the udana vayu this is here in the throat region now it is because of this vayu that we are able to stand upright and straight and we are able to turn in different directions if this vayu would not be functioning within us we would be walking around like animals on earth uh, this vayu even helps in swallowing of food vomiting and then singing and when it comes to pronunciation of words we use this vayu so this vayu is predominant in this region then comes vyana vayu vyana vayu is present throughout the body and it helps sensory nerves to be active it uh, helps the beating of the heart it gives strength to the body it keeps the blood circulating and it helps the sapranas the sapranas there are five more types of sapranas and it is because of these sapranas we are able to experience things like sneezing blinking yawning burping hiccups all these things uh, they are a functional saprana 
generally when uh, yogis go into uh, breathless states this happens when the sushumna nadi is totally open and the pranic force is flowing through the sushumna nadi when this happens the person can experience temporary suspension of breath so they can stop breathing and still be alive and they are alive because of the vyana vayu that is circulating throughout the body the vayus in our body are like the servants of the kundalini goddess when the kundalini goddess is preparing to awaken these vayus clear the pathways they clear the blockages in our subtle system so that the kundalini can rise properly so when uh, the vayus clear a particular pathway or a nadi kundalini rises through that pathway and it reaches the sahasrara chakra pranottana what does this mean pranottana is the first release of the pranic force that a person experiences that is the first time the person is experiencing the release of pranic force in the pranamaya kosha or the pranic sheath a normal person does not experience the pranamaya kosha that is why he thinks that this physical body is the only thing that is there and there is nothing beyond the physical body so the first time a person is able to experience his pranic sheath it starts with the event called pranottana certain signs and symptoms can precede the pranottana in my case even before the initial rise of prana i started experiencing about 2 or 3 years earlier to it i started experiencing premonitions i started experiencing visions of various deities dreams of various deities i could feel ants crawling something a sensation of ants crawling beneath the scalp of my body, uh, of my head and then i could feel pressure on my forehead on the, on the temples of my uh, forehead then i even uh, had a very active dream time i started developing minor uh, kundalini symptoms which was which were coming out as health problems and then for the first time i was experiencing the random burst of vibrations in in as pockets in various parts of my body uh, sometimes i would experience a slight vibration in my hand sometimes in my feet sometimes in my back it made no sense to me back then i thought maybe i was terribly sick so these are some things that will precede the initial release the pranottana in the body uh people may have different kinds of symptoms and some may not have any symptoms but still experience pranottana so this is a very in, the experiences which i have to, talked about right now are my own experiences now the pranottana generally happens when first time the pran here you can see the picture of ida and pingala moving around the central sushumna and while they move around the central sushumna they are meeting at nodes these are the chakra points so here you can see they are meeting at six points the six chakras which are there on your spine the picture is not the accurate accurate de- description uh, of the uh, spine and the brain because i posted the brain a little high above the spine otherwise i will not be able to uh, describe the process properly so this last node which you see here is the agya chakra this year okay so when the first release happens you can see two nadis moving up the spine the first is on the right hand side is the uh, pingala nadi and on the left side you have the white colored ida nadi so the the first pranottana the first release happens through the pingala nadi so you will experience it the way i have seen here uh, i've shown in the picture here you suddenly experience uh, energy flowing into 
the pingala nadi and zigzag uh, it zigzags up the spine and it's something like a snake moving up your spine and it goes into your brain and there it disperses so that is how generally pranottana starts in a person few others might experience the pranic activity happening outside the spine area also now some people they receive initiation or diksha from their gurus when they receive shakti path the initial release happens to the pingala nadi and what is the difference between the kundalini awakening and pranottana pranottana is the initial state of kundalini awakening that is without the pranottana happening you will not have a kundalini awakening but a pranottana may or may not take you to a kundalini awakening now whether a person's kundalini act, uh, awakening happens or not depends upon a lot of factors that is uh, his uh, lifestyle the subtle body how how strong it is his mental emotional physical condition his samskaras his karmic baggage his vasanas uh, the um, the maturation of his soul there are lot of things that go into deciding whether a event like pranottana can lead to a kundalini awakening or not so in generally people might experience pranottana but then they may not uh experience kundalini awakening in that lifetime but once they keep their spiritual practices going on they will uh, experience kundalini awakening if not in this lifetime it will be experienced in the next lifetime so pranottana is like say for example you are boiling a bowl of water the vapor that emanates from the water is like pranottana it is the first release of but kundalini is still there in the form of water the actual core of the uh, energy is still not released only a little very minute part of it has got released and that minute release is called pranottana now for few it might continue the process might continue from there onwards for example in my case when i had an initial release uh, to the pingala nadi few minutes after that i experienced a release of energy through the ida nadi also so the ida and pingala nadi met here and then in my third eye my third eye got activated at very moment i saw this image in my third eye initially i was uh, terrified uh, seeing cobra from such close quarters and from there on i started experiencing uh, a lot of uh, dreams where there were a lot of serpents in the dreams and i was experiencing a lot of uh, flow of energy through my channels but initially it felt like snakes were moving through my channel through my nadis and that actually uh, put me into a um, uh, very fearful situation i took a lot of time to come out of this fear and to be uh, and to even understand that as undergoing a kundalini awakening process a kundalini awakening process leads to kundalini rising through one of the many routes that are available for it to reach the sahasrara chakra now this rising from the muladhara to the top of the head it can uh, take many routes and the amount of time that is taken depends on the person the life situation the strength of the subtle body the karmic baggage the person has there are many other factors also so for few it happens very fast and for few it is a very long traumatic arduous process if it happens spontaneously and kundalini can be awakened not only through shakti path it can be awakened through trauma through life shock also 
if we take the example of uh, Sri Ramakrishna Paramahamsa, he took three days for his Kundalini to rise from the Muladhara to the top of the head. And Swami Muktananda took eight years for the same thing. My case, I took 11 years for that to happen. So Kundalini rising can happen a very quickly or it can take one, two, more lifetimes for it to move from the muladhara to the top of the head. Here on the board I have drawn a picture as to in how many ways Kundalini can rise from the muladhara to the sahasrara chakra. And the point you see here is the parabindu. The parabindu exists in the pericarp of the uh, sahasrara chakra. And the Parabindu, I spoke about it at length in my last video. Parabindu, you have, it is a dot. It is a dot from which the entire creation has emanated. This dot. Okay. And in this dot, you, you have these figures. This is Mahakundalini. She is the creator of the universe. So, the Kundalini Shakti which is there at the base of the spine, she rises up to meet Shiva. The, she, you can see in this picture, you can see the central shivling and the Mahakundalini is coiled around the central shivling. So the Kundalini Shakti which is there at the base of the spine travels up the spine to meet the Shiva in the Parabindu. So that is her destination. Now this upward moment is called Kundalini rising. It can happen through many different paths. And there are a lot of variations also in this. For example, somebody might, in a normal person, the Kundalini is sleeping at the base of the spine. Here in this picture, I have not drawn the Ida and Pingala Nadis because if I draw the Ida and Pingala Nadis, the picture will become too cluttered and confusing to understand. So I have left those two out. And you can see the six chakras, the Muladhara chakra, Swadhishthana chakra, Manipura chakra, uh, the Anahata chakra, Vishuddhi, Agya and Sahasara chakra. And in the Muladhara chakra, you have the Kundalini Shakti coiled three and a half times and sleeping around the Swayambhu Linga. Now in a normal person, she is fast asleep. Sometimes the person can experience a little of Kundalini stirrings. Kundalini stirring is not Kundalini awakening, awakening, but you will just experience a little symptoms associated with Kundalini stirrings. People enjoy those sensations and they want those sensations to repeat, but the Kundalini is still sleeping. Sometimes what happens is, the vayus, here we have the vayu spinning in the muladhara. The vayus are spinning. So you will experience vayu spinning in the muladhara. And some people think that this kundalini has awakened. But the kundalini is still sleeping. Though the vayus are spinning, kundalini is still sleeping. She has not uh, woken up from her slumber. And in some cases, what happens is, the vayu spin a lot. Kundalini awakens. She awakens from her sleep. But then she sees that the nadis are all blocked. She cannot move up. And because of the spinning of vayus, which are moving very fast, she misses the entry to the Sushimna nadi. So because she has missed the entry to Sushimna nadi, she now is not facing upwards. Generally, she faces upwards looking upwards to the Sahasrara, but now she is no longer facing upwards because she has released her grip, the mouth. She has released the grip of the mouth and now she is not facing upwards. So she does not know where her destination is. In such a case, she gets frustrated and she is woken up from her slumber and she is just lying here in the Muladhara Chakra. Now this is a very, very, very rare situation 
where a person experiences this kind of uh, scenario. We have chakras beneath the muladhara also, which are lower astral chakras or animal chakras. So when somebody who does not have the required qualification to awaken the kundalini, he tries through wrong means uh, or tries by force to awaken his kundalini, the goddess wakes up from sleep. When somebody wakes up from sleep, without completing their sleep, they are angry. But when somebody sleeps the entire night and they wake up the morning, they wake up in the morning, they are very peaceful. So this is like somebody has forcibly woken up Kundalini from sleep. So she is hissing in anger. She, is, she has not woken voluntarily. So what happens is now she is awake here in the Muladhara. And now because this person has not done any spiritual work or he is not uh, qualified for an uh, Kundalini awakening, his nadis are all blocked. They are blocked because of, of his karma, because of his uh, samskaras, vasanas, his thoughts, his uh, behaviors, his uh, the attitudes he holds, the conditioning. Everything is it, it's clogged up the entire nadi system. So Kundalini does not find a way to move up the right path. So she is here and then in such a situation there is a danger that she might get down into the lower astral worlds which is not a good thing. But the chances of this happening is very 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 rare. Before I proceed further on explaining the image I like to uh, talk about few things. Firstly I hear a lot of people who want to awaken the Kundalini because they think they'll get some kind of siddhis and powers uh, and they can harness those powers or they seek the bliss that comes through the Kundalini awakening or they think that they'll become something great because they activate the Kundalini process. It is very important that you have an attitude of the right attitude for awakening a Kundalini because if the uh, if you have not done your spiritual work properly or if uh, the nadis are not open then uh, the kundalini process can become very difficult so it is always advisable to do it under the guidance of a guru if somebody does uh, the kundalini practices without the help of a guru there is always the risk of running into some kind of a problem you can read the book written by uh, Pandit Gopi Krishna where he describes his own Kundalini awakening. He did meditation for 17 years with, without the guidance of a guru and he suffered because of the Kundalini awakening because he didn't know how to handle that energy within his system because he did not move up the right pathway. So there's always these kinds of risks that are associated with Kundalini awakening. Uh, please keep that in mind before you try out any kind of uh, Kundalini awakening methods on your own. Now, the other things I would like to clarify before I move ahead is, uh, generally things like nadis and chakras which we all know about, they are not present there. There is the, for example, you see a nadi moving here, it is just an energetic pathway. And it only becomes active when the energy flows through it. For example, you have the wiring in the house for uh, electricity. But then, uh, until unless the electricity passes through the wire, uh, the bulb will not glow or the fan will not uh, move. In the same way, we have these energetic pathways in our body but these energetic pathways only become active when the pranic energy flows through it otherwise they are, they are inactive even the ch chakras which are there on our spine they only become active when the pranic energy moves through it otherwise they are inactive because on internet i see a lot of uh, 
websites talking about opening chakras closing chakras uh, it does not make sense to me chakras don't open and close like that because it is only when you have a kundalini awakening and the prana flows through it and it is when it flows through that chakra point or that energetic pathway that is when you realize that there is a chakra rotating there otherwise in a normal person until unless there is a flow you will uh, the opening and closing of chakras uh, does not actually make sense to me but yes you will have enough pranic force running through these points so that a normal person can function happily in the external world now in this picture you can see that they are six pathways that lead from the muladhara chakra to the sahasara chakra this is the central sushumna nadi now within the sushumna nadi you have many more other uh, nadis and uh, external to the sushumna nadi you have the lakshmi nadi on the right side and the saraswati nadi on the left side the sushumna nadi consists of the Vajra Nadi, the Chitrani and the Brahma Nadi. The Sushumna Nadi ends somewhere here. The Vajra Nadi which is inside the Sushumna Nadi ends a little higher. And inside the Vajra Nadi is the Chitri Nadi and that ends a little more higher. And inside the Chitri Nadi is the Brahma Nadi and that ends the top of the head. At the top of the head at the Brahmanandra here. Once the Kundalini awakens and because the uh, there is not enough pranic force for it to break these uh, swai, uh, to break the Brahma Grandi and move upwards into the uh, Sushumna Nadi, it might or it has you know the wires are spinning very fast. For that reason, it moves into some other channel. For example, here. So it moves into the channel Lakshmi Nadi. Okay. Now Lakshmi Nadi is a very fiery solar masculine channel. And this is outside the Sushumna Nadi on the right side of the body. And this channel it rules life and death. That is when uh, the fetus is being um, in the mother's womb. It is the Lakshmi Nadi that supports the, uh, the life of the fetus there. And while a person... Uh, he is leaving this world that is uh, when after death the subtle body separates from the physical body and that entire activity is done by the Lakshmi Nadi so this is the Nadi that rules life and death and many yogis who want to uh, give up their life there is something called Icha Maranam or you know they, they want to give up their life voluntarily then they divert their energy into Lakshmi Nadi. So the Kundalini should not enter Lakshmi Nadi. If it enters Lakshmi Nadi, by the time it reaches the heart, this is the Anahata, heart region, the human body can combust. The human body combusts and the person immediately dies. So Lakshmi Nadi and the Kundalini should not enter. Next, other roots which Kundalini should not enter is first thing is the Vajra Nadi. The Vajra Nadi start, it's, it's within the Sushumna Nadi. It, it runs all along the spine, but the destination it does not reach the Brahmarandra. It just it is just touches the Brahmarandra. It does not reach it. So when somebody has a Vajra uh, Nadi rising, it is because the Vajra Nadi has no blockages in it. That is, once the Kundalini has released its grip it is now uncoiled and it wants to move up the other uh, nadis like sushimra nadi chitre nadi they have uh, grandis or blockages which has to be pierced for the kundalini to ascend up the spine but in vajra nadi there is no blockage so the kundalini can easily enter vajra nadi so the vajra nadi you can see here this green ink right it starts from the swadhishthana chakra it moves down into the uh, muladhara chakra and then it moves up the spine up to here just beneath, just near touching the 
Brahmarendra, but it does not uh, culminate. The process does not culminate here. So when when the uh, Kundalini rises up, the Vajranadi, it goes into the brain and it opens certain centers in the brain because of which the person can become very attractive, very magnetic, charismatic. Uh, he can develop special abilities and talents. And uh, because uh, the Kundalini has reached up and, uh, and there is no resting place, it keeps moving up and down in this channel. So this person thinks he's got something, but then when later on he feels he's lost it. So he's not able to retain that uh, level of uh, the spiritual growth which he thought he had. So uh, especially this channel Vajranadi, it is associated with uh, brain orgasms. That is when the vayus move into this nadi during a, se a sexual act, people experience brain orgasms. So when uh, Kundalini enters into this nadi because there are no blockages in it, the person can become a sex addict. He can develop a lot of addictions. So one side he is very charismatic, he has some abilities. And the other side, he, uh, he, he gets, ethically he starts falling down because he has now over sex drive and then he is not able to resist uh, addictions. He, he falls into many different kinds of addictions. So this, this kind of rising, has to be diverted into the Sushumna Nadi. Otherwise, uh, the person will fall down into, uh, the, uh, he will lose all his spiritual uh, vigor and then he will come down to the Muladhara Chakra and he will take on other karmas also. So the spiritual growth cannot be sustained when it Kundari enters the Vajra Nadi. Next is the Saraswati Nadi. The Saraswati Nadi is outside Sushumna. You can see this red Nadi which moves up. This is outside Sushumna. Now this Nadi, it has three blockages. So when Kundalini enters the Saraswati Nadi, this is this Nadi also Kundalini should not enter. But few do it on purpose. Few like to divert. There are some schools where they like to divert the, Sush the Kundalini into these into Vajra Nadi or into Saraswati Nadi because they can harness certain special powers and if there is a capable Guru, he can direct and guide it into Sushuna Nadi. So in, when the Kundalini enters the Saraswati Nadi, it, it also does not culminate in Brahmarandra. So it just touches the Brahmarandra. So because of that, the person will think that he's got enlightenment. He has this temporary sense of enlightenment. And because it is Saraswati Nadi, the goddess of wisdom, he will develop oratory powers. He, will, he can become a poet. He can become uh, a writer. or uh, He can become a very intelligent person who can talk about various different topics. And he can easily understand the scriptures. Even many different things, uh, difficult scriptures, he can understand it very easily because right now because of the Saraswati Nadi rising but Saraswati Nadi rising cannot be sustained because uh, this does not end in Brahmarandra so this rising also has to be diverted into the central Sushumna Nadi now when the Kundalini enters the either the Vajra Nadi or the Saraswati Nadi it keeps moving up and down it's not able to find its path to Shiva. So it becomes frustrated. And because of this constant moving of up and down, the subtle body systems gets drained. It becomes weak. The person loses his uh, uh, vitality. He loses his life force because of this constant travel of Kundalini uh, moving up and down the Nadis. So that is why you say it is very important to have a Guru because Kundalini should not enter the wrong Nadi. Now, even in Saraswati Nadi, uh, uh, the person is uh, can get addicted. He can get addicted to uh, alcohol or some other addictions because he's the the disturbance that is created within the system because of these wrong uh, roots that 
Kundalini has taken takes a toll on his emotional and mental well-being. They resort to addictions. And somebody with the Saraswati Nadi rising, they uh, they can ha they can astral travel. They develop extrasensory perceptions, and then uh, they can uh, they are clairvoyant. Uh, they do a lot of readings, intuitive readings, channeling, uh, all these things, abilities. They come uh, if uh, somebody has a Saraswati Nadi rising, but the enlightenment which they experience, the glimpse of it is lost. So they feel that they have found something, but they have lost it. So they go back down into a very depressive state. You have certain gurus which are there, uh, self-proclaimed gurus who are there, and they keep uh, teaching people about Kundalini and they give them, uh, they come out as gurus. So many of these people, uh, you will see that they're very charismatic, they have a lot of knowledge, and but then they are not actually ethical in their uh, operations. And the reason being is that they have, Kundalini has entered the wrong channel. They have not completed that process. So everybody who talks about Kundalini, uh, until unless they have a proper ethical grounding, you should not believe that they have completed their process. Now right roots through which the Kundalini has to move up is the Sushumna Nadi, the central channel. When Kundalini takes the wrong roots, you will see her as a fiery dragon or uh, if when you look at her, I, you will see a big dragon moving through a very uh, dusty, windy road or uh, you will see a dragon that is coming on to you, which wants to attack you. That is the kind of images or visions or dreams you will have. But once the Kundalini enters the central channel, you will see Kundalini in the form of a snake, moving as a snake. Okay, and in the central channel, there are three knots that the Kundalini has to untie. That is, first is the Brahma Grandi, at the heart level, you have the Vishnu Grandi, and then you have the uh, Rudra Grandi, which is here. So, once Kundalini enters the Sushumna channel, it unties the uh, Brahma Grandi, it moves up, and then it moves till. Uh, it crosses the uh, Vishnu, it pierces the Vishnu Grandi, it moves upwards, it comes to the Agya Chakra. Agya Chakra, just below the Rudra Grandi, you have the lower Agya Chakra and once the Rudra Grandi pierces, you move into the, uh, the you have to pierce the Itara Linga, which is there here, to move into the higher centers. So, until Kundalini reaches this point in the Sushimna Nadi rising, the rising is not a stable rising. It means that she will try to move up and down, up and down. It can take many years for her to reach this state. And when it reaches this state, that is only you can say that the Kundalini rising is now stabilized. Now it is for sure that the Kundalini will rise up and it will reach the Brahma Grandi. For many people, what happens is for the Kundalini energy to rise up the Sushumna, they have to do a lot of spiritual work like chanting of mantras or meditation, hours together of meditation. They have to undertake fasting, selfless service. They have to do many other activities for the Kundalini to move up the Sushumna. But for few, very few selected blessed people, even if they don't do anything, the energy will push its way and move up the uh, Sushumna. So, until unless it comes to this area, you cannot say that it will move, that the uh, energy has stabilized in the system. Once it crosses this area, then we can say for sure that the Kundalini rising will reach the uh, Brahmarandra. So, just beneath the Agya, the lower Agya Chakra, sometimes the Kundalini just stops in this area. While it is in this area, it has access to this area of the face and the lower part here. So when it comes in contact with these areas, it can open some petals in this area. So even if the person does not have a full rising, even if it reaches this area because it has opened certain petals in this area, the person can develop certain abilities, special talents and abilities. They can understand scriptures very nicely. They can become good teachers, good speakers. They can astral travel and they have certain uh, uh, powers like clear audience, clear sentience, okay? So because of uh, the rising, 
till here. Now once it crosses up, it reaches the Brahmarantra. So this is the rising that happens when somebody has a spontaneous awakening or when somebody takes a diksha from a guru under the guidance of a guru. Generally the rising happens through this path. The other two are the rare path through which Kundalini can rise is one is the Brahma Nadi, which is the innermost Nadi of Sushimna. The innermost, the Brahma Nadi, though it starts here and says it is the, it, it is present inside the Sushimna. It is present inside the Sushimna. So somebody has a Brahma Nadi rising, that is the moment Kundalini wakes up, it shoots up the Brahma Nadi. Immediately it comes out. It goes to Sahasrara Chakra. This kind of an event happens very quickly. And this happens very rarely, maybe once in 1000 years. So when a great soul, a Mahatma is born, they have a Brahmanadi rising. And when somebody has a Brahmanadi rising, the entire universe witnesses this. Because it's a very rare and a very beautiful event. And the person is very, very, very advanced spiritual soul. Otherwise, it is, it is generally does not happen. And while it moves up the uh, Brahmanadi, it opens all chakras, and uh, it uh, clears away all the pathways. Everything is done very quickly. The next rare kind of rising happens through Chitrini. Now, Chitrini is also inside Sushumna. It starts here and it ends. Just beneath the Brahmanadi. So Chitrinari rising, you can see here in the form of a uh, black. You can see this black line moving like this from chakra to chakra. This is a very rare uh, kind of rising also. And in this kind of rising, the person is able to see the entire subtle body. That is, you can see every chakra. It's like having a tour of all chakras. You will see all chakras, you will see all petals, you will have a total understanding of the subtle body, the kundalini signs. And while this is moving up, the person is guided by kundalini, the goddess. She will give him a lot of knowledge and kundalini grooms this person to become a guru, to write books on kundalini, the signs of kundalini. The science of the subtle uh, body, they have the total information of, in and out information of the Kundalini awakening process. For others who have, uh, who had the wrong risings or the ones who had the rising through Sushamna, they only know part of the picture. So, you will, the person who has a total 100% uh, knowledge of this science is the one who had a rising through the Chitrini Nadi. So there are six different pathways, the Lakshmi Nadi, the Saraswati, the Vajra Nadi, the Sushumna, the Chitrini and the Brahma Nadi. So it should not enter Lakshmi Nadi, uh, Vajra Nadi and uh, Saraswati Nadi are not desirable. It has to enter the Sushumna Nadi, it generally enters the Sushumna Nadi and then if somebody is destined to become a great Guru then it enters the uh, Chitrini Nadi and maybe once in thousand years when a very great soul is born it enters the Brahma Nadi. So these are the different routes which uh, Kundalini takes from the Muladhara to the Sahasrara Chakra. So what should be done when somebody has a wrong Kundalini rising that is it goes up the wrong pathway. In such a scenario it is always good to take help from an able guru and then to uh, indulge into a lot of spiritual practices and then to surrender to the goddess, to cultivate a sattvic way of thinking, living and behaving. This will uh, slowly lead Kundalini into the Sushumna channel. Now, once the energies in the Ida and Pingala Nadi, that is the left and right side of your body have uh, integrated. The energy enters into the Sushumna Nadi automatically. When it enters the Sushumna Nadi, while it is moving up the Sushumna Nadi, it pierces through 
the chakras. The chakras open up like lotuses or some describe it as rose buds also. So here in the picture you can see that the uh, chakras are open and spinning. So this only happens when this Kundalini enters the Sushumna channel. And uh, while it goes up, it opens all the chakras, petals, all the nadis and uh, it, uh, it comes out of the Brahmarandra. And again, uh, there are still uh, processes, upper processes that has to happen for uh, it to reach Parabindu. Now, while uh, the uh, energy is moving up, okay, while the energy is moving up, it is rising up the Sushumna, by individual effort, it can only reach the Agya Chakra. It cannot go beyond the Agya Chakra. Because to go beyond the Agra Chakra, you need the blessings of the Goddess Kundalini or you need a blessings of an able Guru. Otherwise, the energy will only stay till here. See, all these blockages which we have in our body, the Grandis, they are more like doors. You need that keys to open all these doors. And the keys to opening all these doors comes from the right way of thinking, the right, right way of living and the right way of behaving. That is inculcating sattvic way of living. Once Kundalini reaches this point, it removes any kind of uh, lower egoic qualities in the person. If it is moving up further, it removes the tamasic and rajasic qualities and replaces them. It makes the person more sattvic in nature before it can proceed upwards. So this is how the process happens in the body. There are certain unique experiences a person may have while this process is going on in his body. First thing is the light language, mystical symbols, lights. They generally see lights in meditation, but light language and mystical symbols happen much later in the process. Here, here you can see some light symbols. Uh, and then some mystical symbols here, right? All these kinds of symbols will start coming into your third eye. Once Kundalini reaches this area, it crosses this area. That is, once you process in this area, it is moving into the Vijnanamaya Kosha, the intellectual sheep. Once it moves into these areas, you will see, start seeing light symbols, many mystical uh, symbols. Few of them are not there on the internet for me to uh, put here in the uh, uh, slideshow but when you see these symbols or these different alphabets or words or whatever figures and they're they're glowing with light all of these are glowing with light uh, you will not know the meaning of these things it will much later in the process you will start understanding what these symbols really mean uh, but Ordinary lights, you can start seeing them even in meditation. Next, you will start hearing mantras. Or mantras can start even much earlier. Then you will start receiving information and intuition. You will start, uh, it can come in the form of uh, premonitions. Or it can come as sudden information into your head as or as in the form of intuition and this can start happening even in early part of the process but when you start reaching the later part of the process you get a lot of information uh, about things which you never understood earlier so now you understand scriptures and many other things easily then uh, you start uh, seeing that the way you identify the way you see yourself is now different earlier you had this uh, identity of being a, no, a human. But now that kind of identity uh, which you had, some people while they are in the process of awakening start realizing, they start remembering their past lives. And they realize that they are born in uh, other uh, worlds also. And some people, 
all souls that are born on earth are do, have, do not have their origin on earth some of the souls have come from other dimensions so one if there's a soul who has come from another dimension they can recall from which dimension they came and they know why they are on earth then you start seeing cause and effect in on uh, in everything earlier for example if you would uh, see that see yourself as a victim of a situation now you can understand why something happened to you because there's a cause for it and because of that kind of change in your attitude you no longer see yourself as a victim gateways as i already told you that every grandi every knot every blockage that is there while the kundalini is ascending up is more like a gateway until unless you have the keys or the codes to open it you cannot proceed further so it is always advisable to have a guru's uh, guidance or help here you will start meeting entities initially it can be lower uh, entities not the good good kind of entities then you can slowly once you energies are moved up you will start meeting deities and saints also synchronicity is is a very common thing when somebody is kundalini is rising you will see how the how we are connected to the world around us and how the world sends messages through us to us through various mediums and sometimes it is really really surprising call of the beloved a normal person he seeks love outside of him he feels he is incomplete without a companion or a mate that is because he has not integrated his inner masculine feminine energies once you start integrating your inner masculine feminine energies and the energies uh, they start moving up from the vishuddhi up this area you will see that your if you are a woman you will see that your inner masculine is calling out to come uh, asking you to come to him very lovingly and if you are a man your inner feminine will call you with a lot of love so in my case my inner they can come in any form in my case uh, my inner masculine came in the form of a dolphin and he was calling with lot of love to come to him so this is something everybody will experience the true call of love your own inner uh, if you're a man your inner feminine will give you a call and if you're a woman the inner masculine will call you with a lot of love so when these two energies integrate you become a complete person and you are no longer seeking karmic relationships or uh, normal relationships with people you you are generally happy living alone because you are complete within yourself and if you really want a mate or if you if you get married in future it will only be with somebody who has also integrated their own inner masculine and feminine energies that is they are also a complete person so you two together then can form a, a, a very uh, loving and a very high quality relationship premonitions lucid dreaming that is very clear dreaming you can remember and recall your dreams with a lot of clarity those kind of dreams are very normal astral traveling then karmic closing and karmic removal you will see that uh, many events in your life once the energy starts moving into the higher chakras you will see that a lot of events in your life where your relationships with a lot of people around you are ending the, the loose ends are getting tied up and the karmic debts are getting cleared out so people start all those uh, relationships which are karmic based start falling out of your life now only soul based relationships will enter your life karmic removal now our karma our karmic baggage is there in the along the spine in the chakras it is it blocks our chakras so what kundalini does is while it rises up it in my case i had a blast at the bottom of my spine and in my third eye i could see that blast rocketing up my spine and while it was rocketing up my spine it it removed all the debris which was there in my chakras it 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 came out from sides it came out from my mouth from my nose from my my head it was all flowing out all the black uh, tar 
uh, all the negrido which was there in my system was just pushed out of my system, the subtle body. And I could, could see, very clearly see that in my third eye. If person has uh, any karmic baggage, he will have to take another lifetime. And because he has to uh, clear away the baggage. So Kundalini clears away all the karmic baggage and that will be the person's last lifetime here on earth. Then major life changes happen. A lot of people fall away from your life. Maybe you suddenly move out to a different place. New people enter your life. New job opportunities. Uh, unexpected things happen in your life. Uh, which will support your further growth. And then you come to know why you are on earth or you have a special mission on earth. Generally when somebody has a Kundalini awakening and uh, when they have reached a certain level in the awakening process, they the Kundalini guides them and it tells them what to do. So generally they become these, uh, they become gurus or writers or there are many different paths in which these people walk on earth. Few of them uh, gen but the general uh, uh, object is to raise the consciousness on earth. So few of them will be working very quietly behind closed doors in their home and they will be uh, raising the consciousness of earth. Few will be working on public forums and they will be talking to people so that they understand about uh, consciousness and how they can raise their consciousness. Few of them will be working in many different uh, occupations so that they can uh, set a high ethical code in that particular area of work so that the others have a role model uh, to follow. So these be, uh, people, they place, they get placed at various uh, levels, at various places so that they can help the humanity to evolve further. And many of them not even come out and uh, talk about their process. The very few who actually come out and talk about their process. So these are uh, uh, a byproduct of the process. If it is a uh, wrong uh, root rising, then uh, the Siddhis may be temporary in nature. And uh, if it is a correct rising, correct pathway, then uh, Siddhis come as a part of the process, but they should not be given much importance. The reason being, so these are like uh, beautiful stones on the pathway. If you get distracted by these beautiful stones because they're shining and they're very attractive, you will lose your, uh, you lose the way and you, you, you will lose your sight of the goal. So what is more important is the goal, which is liberation. Liberation or moksha. So the Siddhis should not become a distraction on the spiritual path. So these are some of the unique experiences somebody might have uh, while they are undergoing the process and the process moves up a certain level in their system. Uh, so in today's session I spoke at length about uh, the pranic rising that happens in our body in the form of pranatana, how it happens, the first release and then how many different pathways the kundalini can move up the spine and the unique experiences that are associated with uh, the rising and in general with the process and the different kinds of values that are there and how they affect our system. Thank you.